Welcome back to my workshop. Now today I've got to make another jewellery box. I've had to restart this video because it's already gone wrong and I hadn't even started. Uh, the initial idea was I was going to make it out of a pear tree. This here was from a tree cut down out of my nephew's garden. I've cut the wood, I've planed it, thicknessed it, I've got it all ready, but it's still too wet. And as a result, even though this has been through the planer already, it's still changing shape. Okay, so that would have been nice, but I'm gonna to have to change my plan. So my plan is, I've got some old drawers. Here's some old drawers. They've got runners in them and holes. I'm gonna try and use this wood to make some jewelry boxes. Okay, so the first thing I've got to do is, uh, I've got to see how much wood I've got to use. So this has got some old dovetail joints. So what I've got to do is cut all those off. <laughs> Okay, so I've cut my drawers uh, to see how much wood I've got. I've managed to cut my front and my back and my two sides. Uh, but the thing is though, that's not tall enough. Now, obviously it's got to be this wide, but a little bit taller. So what I've had to do is cut another two sides and two fronts and backs. Okay, and then just quickly run a plane along the edge to get a jointable surface. So what I'm gonna do now is stick those together and those and then I can cut it down to the right height okay so there's all this lot sticking together uh, I haven't clamped them too hard because I didn't want the balls to to tip okay Right, let's leave these to dry, probably leave them overnight, and then come back to this tomorrow. Okay, so what I'm going to do is probably going to chop a bit off of uh, the ends, because I've still got things like this. Okay, so I'll chop a bit off here, and a bit off here, and give me 120 mil in the middle. Okay, so these are all now the right height, uh, so the box is going to be something like this. Okay, it's going to be something like this. Okay, now what I've got to do is, as my last couple of videos have built up to, uh, I'm now going to change over to my finger joint cutting jig, which is this table with this blade. Uh, so this is what this was built for. Mount this on the table and we'll be ready to cut some finger joints. <laughs> Right, so this is now set up with my new blade and my finger jointing jig. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick trial with the same material that the box is made out of. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick finger joint on here and here. Make sure they fit okay. If not, I'll adjust it and then try it again. Okay, so I've done my little trial run here. Uh, now it's a little bit tight, which is funny because with the MDF it was a little bit loose. Uh, but it fits okay, but the problem is where I've cut this, I've cut it across the grain. Okay, so the grain goes this way and I've cut it across the grain. And what it's done is, if we can focus, yeah, we've got loads of little bits of almost chip out here where the, where the wood has come off. Okay, and of course then when you put it together, uh, it ends up with quite a, a nasty little joint uh, but all in all I think it's okay uh, obviously when I do this box uh, I'm going to be cutting it on the end grain so I'm hoping it's going to be a bit cleaner than this right okay so I've decided to do another cut this time I've done it on the uh, end grain it's much cleaner than it was before but now I've got another problem now this bit here is actually touching but there's gaps everywhere else now, the reason for this is because this piece of wood 
is not actually square okay it's not far out but it's out of square enough and i'll show you why that makes a difference right the reason it makes a difference is because once you've done your first cut and you've turned around your first piece you put this on the pin and you hold it down so this is nice and flat when you push in your second piece yeah if there's a gap like that yeah this gap here if you push that and don't take any notice it actually lifts this finger off of the board okay because that's lifted up higher it means the groove is not as deep okay so that's not as deep so when you put it together you end up with that touching first and you end up with gaps everywhere else so make sure your bit of wood is proper square okay so where are we <clears throat> well after my first experiments this and this uh, it was looking okay and then I cut my box and it all went horribly wrong uh, so I did another try then another try then another try and then another try and some more tries and then some more tries now what was happening is oh another one um, what was happening is there was a compound error so let me show you what was happening is I was cutting my first tooth and it was giving me some decent results 6.03 yeah it's a six mil blade and then by the time I was getting to the last one I was on 5.3 yeah so there's a compound error each one of these teeth gradually got thinner and thinner which meant the gaps got wider and wider and wider okay so when you went to put them together they wouldn't fit and the reason for that was a couple of things let me quickly show you okay so without going into too much detail the difference turns out that it's all dependent on how fast you go through yeah if you rush you end up with little variations which end up giving you a problem and then all you do is when you move it on to the next tooth that problem gets worse okay so it's not only the speed that you go through it's also how far you go through now on some of them i was going all the way through to the other side of the blade you don't need to you only need to go to the peak of the blade and what's happened is i was doing different amounts each time and that was giving me a different cut a different thickness of cut now whether it's some variation in the blade or in my saw because it's not the best saw but that was causing problems so you'd end up with wider gaps thinner teeth etc uh, so i ended up putting a stop here so i'd have consistent depth of cut okay that was just a couple of things so let's move on to the next bit So now I know my joints fit-ish, uh, I've got to do some engraving on the front before I stick it together uh, because this, when it's box shape, it won't fit in my CNC machine. So I'm going to leave it apart, do some engraving on the front and possibly on the back, don't know yet, uh, and then I can stick it together. Right, so I've now done my first bit of engraving on the front, so now I can actually stick it together. Uh, literally just going to use wood glue, a square, and the paintbrush. Right, let's go on with that. So I've got loads of glue on this now, loads of clamps. I've made sure it's all square. I'm going to leave this now to dry properly and then we can start the top and the bottom. Right, so I've jumped ahead a little bit. Um, what I've done now is the box is obviously stuck together. It's fairly square. Um, on the bottom, I've routed out a groove all the way round here and that's for the base to sit in like this 
Okay, it's a few gaps, but I can feel those. So that's the bottom. Now to do that, I had to make myself a new base for my small router. Okay, so it sat on there without tipping because I didn't want to do this. Okay, so I've now routed that out. The base goes in like that. Now on the top, I've just got another piece of the drawer fronts, which I've stuck together to make a top. But what I want to do is a groove all the way around the edge so it actually sits inside. I've set up my grooving blade. Why not? Because I like it. And a stop. So I've taken away this bit, okay, which is for my finger joints. And I've set this up now with my stop. So I should be able to now just put this in and go around all the edges to get myself a nice groove all the way around. And then that will sit in my box. That's the plan. Right, okay, so what I've done is I've got these grooves now around the edge. So this bit in the middle sits inside the box. Like that. Lovely. So what I've got to do now is engrave the top before I stick this on. Right, my engraving is done. Uh, all I've got to do now is stick the top on and the bottom on. So a bit of wood glue, I think. Right, so now the top is stuck on, the bottom is stuck on. That's all stuck nicely, uh, but there's no lid yet. It's, it hasn't got a lid. Uh, so what I've got to do is I've basically got to cut the lid out. I'll do that on the table saw. Right, I've now converted my table saw back to the standard blade uh, and I've got to do that to cut through the lid. Uh, I won't cut all the way through, I'll just cut most of the way through and then finish it off with a hand saw. Uh, but before I cut all the way through that, I've got to shellac the whole box, put some black in all the lettering. When that's dry, then I can sand it all down as a complete box before I separate the lid. Okay, I thought I'd quickly show you this. Uh, for those of you that hasn't seen this before, now what I've done is the lettering, I'm colouring it in, in black acrylic. Now I'm using uh, one of these black acrylic pens. So it's paint, but it's actually in like a felt tip pen. Uh, now what I've done is I've coated it with shellac. I've let that dry. So when I then fill in the black, okay, it doesn't matter if I go over a little bit because what I can do is then sand it down. Now if I didn't put a shellac on what happens is the paint will soak into the wood. You don't want that. These are really good. There's no way you'd be able to get a finer finish as that with a paintbrush. Well some people could but I can't. Once this is all finished then I can sand it back and it will just leave the paint. <laughs> Okay, so I've got all the black paint in all the lettering now. Uh, I was going to wait until after that had all dried and I was going to sand it all down before I separated the lid. But because I had a bit of a wobble and I've ended up cutting a rather large groove here. Okay, so I'm going to have to put an infill here, which means more sanding. So what I'm going to do now is quickly separate the lid using my Japanese pull saw. <laughs> Right, now I've cut the lid off. Uh, what I've got to do is put some hinges on. I'm going to use these ones, which are like jewelry box hinges. Never used these before. So I'm assuming I just cut out a small recess for these to sit in the base and the top. And for that, I'm going to use a little chisel, I think.
Right, so by the power of editing, that went really well, and now I've got my hinges. This is great. The reality was, it was a pain in the ass. Uh, the screws I had, uh, obviously didn't come with the hinges. But every single screw, I had to turn the head down, use the drill for that, and a file, uh, because they were just a little bit too big. So I couldn't shut the bloody thing. Right, that's that done. Let's get on with the next bit. Okay, so the next bit, uh, jewellery box. Bit boring on its own. Let's do something interesting. Let's turn it into a musical jewellery box. So, I've cheated. I've gone out and bought a musical jewellery box. Now this is obviously not the world's most expensive jewellery box, but it was the easiest way to get a unicorn. Okay, and this has obviously got the little musical box. Right, so the idea is I'm going to take out all of the gubbins out of here and use it in my one. That's enough. Right, I won't go into too much detail here, but this has obviously got to go from here into this one. Uh, the problem is on this one, the walls are only a couple of mil thick, but on my one, obviously, they're about 10 mil thick. So what that means is the depth of the key is too shallow, and also my screws. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do is recess those into here. Right, the first thing I've got to do is transfer these holes onto here. And what I've done is I've marked my center line on here, okay, because the key is not in line with where the unicorn goes. Okay, so I marked my center line, marked a line 10 mil to the left. Okay, so that's where that's got to go. Uh, transferring these holes, what I'm going to do is quickly get some masking tape. Draw an approximate center line where my key is going. Okay, so that's my center line. That's the one that's got to line up with this line here. Okay, so I've now got my three holes marked, and they should line up with these. Okay, so now I've got to drill and recess these, and then mount this inside. So I've jumped ahead a little bit here. Uh, this little bit here has taken me all evening and it was just lots of sticking and cutting. Uh, probably not very interesting to watch. But let me show you what I've been doing. Okay, so here's our box so far. The, the musical box is here, but obviously we want that covered over. So what I've done is I've made a little box here to go over the top. And this slips over here like this. Okay, that will all be stuck in place. Then I've got some shelves. Uh, and these are for the trays to sit on, and they literally just slip in here. Uh, and then I've made a tray. Uh, this is just literally 6mm MDF, uh, but this is going to be for rings and then a few bracelets. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. Obviously, I've had to allow for Mr. Unicorn because he has to bend down here, so I couldn't have anything in the middle. That's where we are at the moment. What's next? Right, so I've spent a few hours now sanding this thing and cutting all my lining bits. Let's have a close look at what we've got. Okay, so this is the pile of stuff we've got now. Ignore the pile of rubbish in the background. That's just rubbish. Uh, right, we've got our main box here. That's where the music box goes. Got a little tray here with all our music box bits in it. We've got our shelves that the uh, tray sits on. Here's the tray. Okay, we've got our music box cover with a little hole. Uh, we've got a mirror. It's very nice. Uh, and these are all the bits I've cut to line the box. Uh, and we've got the lid. Okay, so these are actually just going to be stuck in like that. Okay, so, and of course, we got a unicorn. Unicorn. Okay, so now I've got to wax this and assemble it at the same time.
Okay, the uh, box cover now is waxed, the music box is in. Uh, now, this may have to come out at some point for uh, running repairs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit it in carefully and then just put a little bead of hot glue on either side just to hold it in place. I mean, it's not going to be under any strain and that way, if it needs to come out, it's minimal damage. So let's just put a little dab of hot glue on this. Make sure it's in the right place. Okay, I'm also going to put just a little dab of hot glue on the uh, shelf supports here because these might have to come out to take this box out. Okay, so they're in securely and they can be removed if necessary. All right, the next bit is some of my lining. Now, all I'm using is this little colored foam that I got from, I think it was Hobbycraft. It's fairly inexpensive, but when you're working with it, make sure you keep your hands clean because it can get really dirty. Same again, I've cut it to the right size. Just gonna put a little dab of hot glue and then push it into place. <laughs> Okay, so they're seen securely, it's not going anywhere. For the sides, they're going to be for rings. Now what I've done is just cut some more squares, uh, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get two squares, just basically fold them over like this. I'm going to stick those in on both sides. <laughs> So most of it's assembled now uh, and I nearly forgot before I put the wax on uh, I've got some new tokens look at this shiny look at that now I've got these from a guy called Von Henk yeah so I've got loads of these I'm going to put one of these in the back so that means you've got to put it in the drill press So I've given it a couple of coats of wax, uh, it's all fitted together now, and here it is. Yeah, nice little jewellery box. Got some engraving on the top, and it's got a unicorn. Oh, how sweet. Right, let's have a look at some beauty shots. Okay, so that's it for this one. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. It's been quite nice. Like the engraving. It's got my little new little logo in the back now. I like them. Uh, yeah, it's a good little box. Hopefully she'll like it. It's a nice thing. Right, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. and they've all got joints, okay? This won't fit in my CSC. <coughs> oh, The lid. <laughs> bit soon, bit, oh. <laughs>
It's a nice beauty, beautiful little box and